Okay, this lecture is cylindrical and spherical coordinate systems. So let's start with Cartesian, the x, y, z coordinate system. So here's a point in space, and we characterize it as so many units in the x direction, so many units in the y direction, and so many units up. So let's label it as x, comma, y, comma, z. Okay, in the cylindrical coordinate system, we'll do that in red. Basically, cylindrical means polar coordinate system in the xy plane, plus we'll just add that z component as z. So what that means is, let's start with this point here. In the xy coordinate system, we can think of this as so many units from the origin, R, and so, so many units of angle from the x-axis, we'll call that theta. Okay, So it's just like polar coordinates. In fact, it is polar coordinates in the xy plane. So, we'll write cylindrical. And we're going to put things in the r, theta, z coordinate system. So the equations that we need are, well, what is x? x is just r cosine theta. Okay, y is r sine theta. All right, and z well, we're just going to call that z. We're going to leave it alone. So now things are in r, theta, z coordinate system with these three equations. So it's just polar coordinates, and z is equal to z, and that's what we mean by cylindrical. Now also note that x squared plus y squared equals r squared just like in regular old polar coordinates. And the last thing, well, before, before we go on, the reason it's called cylindrical is if you have the equation r is equal to, say, some number a. So this length was, say, a. Okay, and there's no theta here, so theta could be anything. So that means it's a circle in the xy plane, but there's also no z, so that circle extends up and down um, forever. So what you're left with is a cylinder. So this is just simply a cylinder, and that's where this word comes from. So we use this system to transform from rectangular to r theta z, when what we're working with, either the integrand or the bounds, are cylindrical-like. They have some properties um, that are shared with, with this system. Okay. We also need one more thing. We need rectangular coordinate system dv is dx, dy, dz. In this transform system, we also need a dv. So what's it going to be equal to? Well, if you recall, in the xy plane in the polar system, you have something that looked like this for area. We called it dA. And dA was equal to, write it here, dA was equal to well, R changes a little bit, so it's dr. And then we have this, this length here. Well, that's associated with d theta, but it's an arc length, so it's r d theta. So r, and we'll put d theta here. So dA in polar coordinates is r dr d theta. All right, so that's this little area here. And if we bump it up, and give it some height, it becomes a volume. And that change in height is dz. 
So dV is dA, which is R, dR, d theta, and then simply add on the dz to give us our volume element. Okay, so these are the one, two, three, four, five equations you have to remember to do this transformation from green to red. All right, now we're going to do spherical coordinate system next. And we'll do that in blue this week. Blue. Spherical. And here we're going to use um, rho, which I'll explain shortly, phi, an angle phi, the line is vertical there, and theta. And that's the same theta as the uh, polar coordinate system. So how does it work? We're going to use the same r and theta but this time, to identify the point in space, we're going to use the distance from the origin. And that's what we mean by rho. Rho is very similar to r. r is in the xy plane. Rho is in space. And we need angle phi. That angle is right here. It's the angle from the positive Z axis. Okay, so it's it's that angle. And theta is just this theta here. Now the trick to remembering this <coughs> is we, we want to write formulas for x, y, and z, and then also dv. Alright. The trick is to first write things in terms of r and theta. Alright, but before we can do that, we need to define what r is. This length r is the same thing as, as this length r. See, you have a, a rectangle here. And the angles are 90 degrees, although it doesn't look it, but they are. So you have this rectangle here. And this value, z, is the same as this value. So, what is r? Well, this is, this is 90 degrees. Okay? It's 90 degrees. It's the angle from the z-axis to this line here, which is really horizontal. It doesn't look it because it's three dimensions on a two-dimensional board. So this length here is this length, the hypotenuse of this right triangle, times the sine of phi. So r is the hypotenuse rho sine phi. Okay? That's R. So what's Z? Well, same right triangle, 90 degrees, hypotenuse is rho, so Z is rho cosine P. So Z is rho cosine P. Okay, well that takes care of Z, rho and phi. So what's X? Well, this is X. In the xy plane, that's r cosine theta. All right, so x is r, but r is rho sine phi cosine theta. So rho phi theta, rho phi theta. So good. That's the formula for x. And y is just r sine phi, but r is, I'm sorry, r is y. Y is R sine theta, where R is rho sine V sine theta. There. Rho V theta. So we're done.
this is x, y, z in terms of rho, phi, and theta. So <coughs> now the last part of this is what is the element of volume? Okay, to do that, I'm going to draw a little picture and talk about what dv is in geometric terms only. The next lecture we're going to do the Jacobian, but that's just a different way of doing the same thing. Here we're going to use geometry. So what's the element of volume out in space here? Well, it's very hard to draw. But, you know, it looks, looks something like that. It's kind of like a wedge. So, let's do this piece first. This is, remember, the origin is here. And this is rho. So this piece here is the change in rho. So that's just d rho. Okay, that was, that was pretty easy. Now, what about this piece here as, as phi changes? So, you know, you can think of it as this or this. What's this length? Well, it's an arc length associated with the change in phi. So this is d phi. Going from here to here is hard to draw, but going from here to here is d phi. But what is the arc length? Well, it's rho d phi. So we need a rho, and I'm going to put d phi over here. Okay, it's like the change in latitude if this were a sphere, or a you know, planet Earth. The last piece is, is um, this piece here. And that's, you can think of that as how things are changing in the xy plane. Well, that's associated with r and theta changing. So that length is r d theta. Alright? It's, it's this piece here in space. So, but what is r d theta? Well, r is rho sine phi, so it's rho again, sine phi, d theta. So the element of volume, geometrically, is rho squared, sine phi, d rho, d phi, d theta. Okay, again, we're going to prove this using uh, what's called Jacobian in the next lecture. Okay, so why is it called spherical coordinate system? Well, if you simply said rho is equal to some number, we used A, last time we used B. Well, what does that mean? It means the distance from the origin is, is a constant, it's B. So what's theta? Well, theta could be anything. <coughs> and what's phi? Well, phi could be anything. Zero to pi radians. So rho is equal to b is a sphere. Right? And that's why we call it spherical coordinate system. And the last fact you should remember is x squared plus y squared plus z squared is rho squared. This is the equation of a sphere. And this is just a fact based upon these equations. All right. That ends this lecture. And I do thank you.